All right, today we're going to go over lesson nine, which is the final lesson in our uh, math chapter for chapter two. So um, this one is probably going to be the most difficult, the most involved. Um, so keep that in mind as you are watching this video. Make sure you're paying close attention and um, ask any questions that you have um, when you finish with it if you have any. So first off, we are going to define our vocabulary terms that we have in this lesson, which is equation and variable. So make sure that you get these things down that I already have written down. You can pause the video now if you'd like to get caught up or just kind of roll with it as I keep going. So an equation, um, when we define that in terms of math, is a number sentence and this number sentence um, contains an equal sign. A number sentence that <laughs> contains an equal sign. Have I ever mentioned that you should use pencil? You should use pencil. Okay, so that seems pretty simple and you're like, wow, that was like a really lame definition. Um, the definition is kind of lame to be completely honest, but whenever we look at some examples, it makes more sense. Um, so let's say um, we have Actually, let's, let's define variable first, and then it will make more sense. So a variable, um, you may have heard this word before, but maybe not in this context. So a variable is a symbol or letter that is used to represent and unknown. Okay, so when we are solving for an answer in math, um, a lot of times we just leave a blank or we have a box that we fill in. Um, as we progress in math throughout the next few years, you're going to be seeing variables more often because there will be multiple unknowns in the problems that you're working with. Variables hold the place of the value that you're trying to find in the form of a letter. So then you're able to define what each letter is worth. So when we look at an equation, and let's look at a non-example. A non-example is something that's not an equation. So a non-example would be two plus five. Two plus five is not an equation. It's a number sentence, uh, but it is not an equation because there is no equal sign. Now remember, um, equal, okay, when we look at this part of the word equation, it kind of looks like the word equal. So that can kind of help you remind you that an equation um, has to have an equal sign. So basically what I can do here is show you a variable in an equation. I can take two plus five and make it an equation by saying it equals a. Okay, so now I have an equation. I'm solving what is two plus five and what does it equal? So an equation has to have both sides of the equal sign equal to each other and to us that seems to be like common sense because if we're saying 2 plus 5 equals something, then both sides are going to be the same. Again, as you get further into math, as you get into more complicated problems that you're working with, um, it's important that both sides of the equal sign will be the same. And there will be more than just one number um, as you get further into math. But for right now, this is pretty much what we're working with. Sometimes the variable will be on this side of the equation and we'll already have our answer, so we'll have to find an unknown over here. And so today, with multi-step word problems, we're going to have more than just two numbers on this side of the equal sign. And it'll get a little tricky, but stick with me and it'll all make sense in the end. Um, at least that's the plan. So, 
we are going to now move on to kind of thinking about our um, keywords and phrases. Um, so when we think of the cube strategy, and uh, feel free to go through and listen to that song again. You can find it on our fourth grade website in the math section. Um, or you can look up on YouTube, um, Cubes on Beast Mode, I think is what it's called. Uh, but when we think about cubes, we circle the numbers, we underline the question, we box the keywords. So this is kind of where we're looking at right now is what keywords are we going to find in an addition problem? What keywords might we find in a subtraction problem? And by identifying those now, it'll make it easier for us to um, know what we need to do when we're looking at a really difficult word problem. So let's write down some pretty typical keywords that we might find. Obviously, the word add means that we're going to be doing addition. Okay, that one's pretty simple. If it says um, this was added, um, to the amount, we would put plus, okay? Um, if the problem asks for something all together, okay, how much did this cost all together? You would add up all the values that you have. Um, so all together means we're going to add. When we see the word and, that means that we're adding something to what we already have. Um, and so that means that we're going to add as well. Um, in all, okay, um, we went apple picking. Each person picked this many apples. How many apples were picked in all? That means we're going to add. Um, looking for the sum, okay, obviously we should know this one because it is the answer to an addition problem. Um, and then if it says, what is the total amount, um, that's another one. So we're only going to write down a few. Um, there's many, many more. And so as you're working through word problems over the course of the school year, to be completely honest, you could put a sticky note on this page that um, says word problem at the top so that um, as you're working through word problems throughout the school year, you can go back to here and say, oh, this is another word that means I need to add, or this is another phrase that means I need to subtract. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some subtraction terms. Um, obviously, minus is going to be our first one. If something tells us to minus something, then obviously we're going to subtract. Um, if something is lost, or we could say um, um, fewer, okay, um, we could look how many are left, we could also say uh, reduce, take away. Okay, all of these things mean we're subtracting. Okay, if we're minusing, um, there was a loss. Uh, we're looking at how much fewer, how many are left, um, reducing the amount of something, taking away. And then just like some, okay, if it asks for the difference, That will also um, that will also tell us that we need to subtract. So um, these are some very typical um, addition and subtraction keywords to look out for. Um, so again, I would kind of bookmark this page in your notes so that you can refer back to it anytime you're working with word problems. Okay. Um, Next up, we're going to actually look at a sample word problem and see what that, um, what this all kind of looks like in terms of solving multi-step word problems. So let's say my word problem is this. The music club had $390 in their account. At the concert, they earned $472 
Afterwards, they had to pay $75 to rent the stage and $102 for the rental equipment. How much is in their account now? Um, I obviously need to go through and use my cubes strategy. So I'm going to use a color for this so that it stands out. Okay. All right, let's use the cube strategy. So I need to circle any numbers that I see. So I see 390. Um, if you'd like to do this problem with me, it is on page one second. It is on page 113, I believe, in your math book. So you could kind of do the cube strategy with me. That would be fun. All right, so let's circle more numbers, numbers, numbers. I don't remember as I was reading seeing any numbers that were written as word form. So I think I have all my numbers. Okay, now I need to underline the question. How much is in their account now? Okay, box my keywords. The Music Club had 390 in their account um, at the concert they earned. Ooh, that's a word that maybe we could add to our list. Afterwards, they had to pay to rent the stage and for the rental equipment. And then now we're looking for how much. Okay, now I need to evaluate what I'm working with. So I need to kind of write out a, uh, an equation, draw a picture, do something. So I'm going to stick with an equation since that's kind of the skill we're focusing on in this lesson. And I'm going to go back to my normal pen. Um, so I'm going to write an equation. So we started with $390. And um, as we went through, we need to see, are we going to add or subtract? So if I'm earning money, that means I'm gaining money. So if I'm gaining money, am I going to add or subtract? I hope that you would say you would add. So they earned $472. Okay, and we don't use, um, we don't need to use dollar signs here, but in our answer, obviously we're looking at a dollar amount, so we should put a dollar sign on our answer. All right. Afterwards, they had to pay. If they're paying something, that means they're losing money because they're giving it to somebody else, and they're paying $75. They also had to pay $102. Now, this word and here, whenever we were talking about that earlier, and can mean to add. Um, but we're not going to add anything here. We're just going to say we're taking that amount away also because I don't want to have to add in parentheses at this point. We're not quite there yet, and that's okay. Now, we're going to say this equals something to finish out an equation. How much is in their account now? So, what I like to do is create a variable that makes sense for my problem that I'm working on. And so, we're talking about money here. So, I'm going to put the letter M. Now, make sure variables, if you're using a letter, is always, always, always lowercase. Capital letters in math mean different things, and we'll get to those eventually, um, but capital letters are not variables. Lowercase letters are. So make sure that um, whatever letter you use of the alphabet that you are using a lowercase letter, and I would highly suggest to not use the letter O because that looks like a zero, and that might get confusing. So now I need to go through and just kind of solve this problem, work it out so I can figure out what my value is at the end here. Again, this is an equation because it has an equal sign. So 390 plus 472. Let's just go ahead and kind of stack that off to the side and add that up. So I have 2 plus 0 is 2. Again, I can add these in any order thanks to the commutative property. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 9 plus 7 is 16. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. So this part right here gets us to 862. Then I still need to subtract 75 and I still need to subtract 102. So let's kind of go through and do 862 minus 75. Okay, remember subtraction does not have the commutative property. I have a one-way street here. 
So 2 minus 5 I cannot do. You need to go next door and bring over a 10 so that we have enough to take away. So I have 5 tens left over here and I brought the 6th over to the 1 spot. I now have 12 ones and I can take away 5 which is 7. Now I have 5 tens and I need to take away 7 tens. That's not possible. So we need to bring over a 100. So now I have 15 tens, take away 7, that's 8. And then 7 minus nothing is 7. We are almost there. This is why it's called multi-step. I'm not just going to add two numbers and be done. I have multiple things to do. So now I can say I did these two things, have 787 minus 102. I should keep writing this down too equals m. So now I'm down to a one step problem and I'm going to bring it over here since I have some room. 787 minus 102. This looks simple. 7 minus 2 is 5. 8 minus 0 is 8. 7 minus 1 is 6. So now I can write it any way I want. I could put 685 equals m or I could say m is equal to 685. And what were we talking about up here? We're talking about money, so I should put dollars. And this would be my final answer. Now, a lot of the times in these lessons, um, especially when it comes to state tests and things like that, they're looking for an equation. Boom. And they're looking for an answer to the equation or an answer for the unknown. So um, this would be a multi-point problem. Absolutely. Probably worth five points, I would say. Um, for setting up the equation correctly, for using a variable, for having an equal sign, for solving each step correctly, and for a correct answer at the end. So lots and lots of points can be earned with these types of problems. And um, make sure though, so I evaluated by writing out this equation, but then I solved by going through all of my steps down here. And these little guys are really useful because it kind of keeps your work organized showing okay I added those two and here's my answer to that and then you just kind of bring everything else down and keep working through the problem until you're done so this is a really good example of a multi-step word problem we had to add once and subtract twice and um, as you're going through your worksheet today um, I kind of have an outline set up for you so I'm going to show you that next All right, so here we have our worksheet for today, um, last worksheet of chapter two, so make sure you do your absolute best. So we took notes on a bunch of addition and subtraction terms here. You only need to list two of your favorites, and that'll get you some easy points. Um, here is what I was talking about of kind of giving you an outline for an equation. So um, here's a sample word problem. Um, you're more than welcome to try to use some of these symbols up here to use the cube strategy, or you can just kind of think it through as you're going. Um, think, okay, earned means I'm probably going to add. And then what you're going to do is come down here, click on the box, and type in a number. Okay, I'm just typing in a random number that's not even in the problem. But um, type in the missing numbers to the equation, fill out the rest of the information, and then you're going to solve for M because it's asking for how much money. So I chose the variable M for you today. Um, then you'll have one more, oops, one more word problem to kind of work through. And this one, um, I put a question mark here to kind of show you like, ooh, we don't know what this is supposed to be. But here we're subtracting, here we're adding. So you have to figure out what this is going to be. And I'll give you a hint. It's either adding or subtracting because that's all we've been talking about, right? So, and then here, um, the variable is on this side of the equation. So um, think about it. Draw pictures to help you visualize um, when you do that, evaluate part of cubes because um, even though it's on the different side, it really isn't that difficult, guys. Okay, think about it, draw a picture, visualize what is happening in your word problem, and then solve for P, obviously. Okay, and then finally, what is a variable? So you need to write a sentence here, and then... 
Um, what symbol does an equation have to have? Okay, this is just a one word answer. You don't have to type a sentence. And then when you're done with all of that, you can attach a picture of your notes. All right, that is all for chapter two, actually. We're going to be reviewing for a couple days and then testing after that. So uh, do your best and um, get ready for reviewing. Good luck.